Howdy folks, this is Justro at Matt Calf Mills. I got a good video for you today. We're going to be doing an old-timey tradition. And it's fed a lot of people, and it tasted real good. We're going to string some beans. You say, Justro, I know what stringing beans is. Well, we're going to string them a second time. You say, Justro, why would you string beans twice? To eat them, that's why. I'm going to show you. Just hang around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out my best looking beans out of this pile. The ones that ain't got no bug bites on them. Uh, they're nice and green. Uh, they ain't started <clears throat> turning you out or nothing yet. Of course, it probably wouldn't hurt them. I just want to start out with nice pretty green beans you know fresh looking healthy my best ones for this and I'm just gonna string them for now string them put them in a pile I got a bug bite on the end I'll just break it off as I string them and go on Just them nice pretty ones. We're gonna make us some good Old timey leather britchy beans, man. Been a while since I, I've had any mother. She uh, used to make them when she was able and had plenty of beans, and it's really been a pretty good while since I've had any. But boy, you talk about good now. They, they've got a different flavor to them, and this. Raggler green beans does. I got kind of a, I don't know if you'd say a smoky flavor or not, but that's kind of what they put you in mind of. Kind of a smoky like flavor. I reckon it's just how they dry out. It just changes the flavor of them, just, you know, just a different way of doing it. Different process changes the flavor of them. And this right here is a real old-timey way of doing it. This is how they done it back before they had, uh, you know, before they had cannon jars, and if they didn't have enough pickling crocs to pickle, well, it didn't matter if they had enough or not, they still liked, dry, they dried a lot of things to eat. They would dry a lot of different things, fruit, apples, dry all that kind of thing, and and uh, eat it through the winter. And it was kind of a free method of preservation because once you dried it and put it up, you was good to go. It'd stay like that. And it, uh, was an easy way of preservation. It, all it took was just a little investment of time. And kept 
kept food fresh and good for them. I've heard stories that they dry all kinds of things. They dried meat, and I've heard of them drying even turkeys hanging up by the fireplace where they get a lot of heat and air circulating. Even dry turkeys now. And beef, big hunks of beef, they dry it. And I think I read that in a Foxfire book or something one time. They would dry that and uh, hang it up upstairs in the attic of their house up there, you know, where it stayed dry and airflow through there. And they'd do that to store a lot of that stuff that they had dried. Just have it to eat right on and on as long as it lasted. lasted. <clears throat> Till they run out of it. But they, they, if it wasn't for drying, we wouldn't have never survived because drying was a big part of surviving in the olden days. A big part of it. They dried a lot of things. Which you can, you know, you can dry something and put it up if you ain't you don't have to have very much at all. That's one of the oldest preservation methods, I guess they are. The Indians used it a lot, I think, and, you know, drying different things and like that. But it sure brought us through, that's for sure. Helped us survive here in these mountains. I'm going to go through and pick through this whole pile of beans Pick out all the ones that's real good shape, and then we'll start stringing them up. I didn't show you, but I went through and got all the the shellies. I went through and got all them shelled out. I'm gonna cook cook me and Charlotte a big pot full of them for supper. Well, here's what we got as far as beans to string up. Down there is the ones that's too big and some strings after stringing them, but we stringed them here. And I'm gonna take a needle and thread now and we'll, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna string these up to dry them. All right, what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna pull me off a piece of thread that when it's doubled, it's gonna be as long as I want my string of beans to be. I'd say that right there would probably be long enough. I don't wanna get them too long cause where I'm gonna have to hang them at might not be, uh, if they're too long, it might not work out too good. So you want to make sure you don't make them too long for the space you're going to be hanging them at. Now, before I tie a knot in this, I'm going to separate the threads. There we go. And I'm going to thread my needle I got me a, a little piece of limb off of the birch tree outside and I'm gonna just cut me some twigs off of that birch about so long and there's probably a hundred different ways to do this but this is just the way I'm going to do it cut me up some twigs
to use on this. Don't have to be birch. You can use popsicle stick, match sticks, or you probably come up with your own ideas to work good for this. So what I'm gonna do is in that loop at the end of the thread where that loop is, where I tied the two threads together, I'm just going to take and make a loop which means I'm going to pull the thread back through itself and make a loop on the end of it if you can see that just a draw loop to where it'll draw down just like that on that little on that little twig and that'll make us a little stopper here for when we start stringing our beans up. We're gonna try to hit dead center of these beans every time. And I'm gonna go through between the beans in the hole, try not to get no beans. I don't know why I feel that way, but I do. So that's what I'm gonna do. And see there, that little twig will stop them beans from coming off the end of your thread. You need something pretty good down there because the beans are, you know, they're not real tough at this point. They're pretty tender, so you need something there to stop them. And we're just going to keep threading them beans. them and try to hit between the beans every time some people will string them from the end of the bean like go right through the end and then they'll hang the strings up horizontal but I'm gonna hang these up from the end that's kind of how we've always done it and that's how I'm gonna do it but You can see there kind of how they're going to look after they're hung up, see. They're going to be out there where they can get plenty of good airflow around them. And they'll dry good if they're in a good place. This is a age-old thing, drying is, but... Drying beans like this, this allowed, if they was out of crocs for pickling and they didn't have canning jars, this was a way that the poorest of poor could preserve them some food to eat for the winter. All they had to have was a pot to cook it in. So, a very old method of preserving food and... I know this fed a lot of people and saved people's life from starving to death. Now it's just uh, something I'm doing here because I want to do it. And also I like the flavor of the beans. We got a bean here that's got twisted up. So I'm going to have to operate on this and get it straightened out. Right there, just like that. Be right easy with them, and you can get the tangle out so they don't get tangled up and crossed up and everything else so that they'll come on down there where they need to be. And if, you, if you're in a place to where the beans can go all the way down each time, it'd work a lot better. It'd probably work a lot better if I... Let me do something different here to prevent that problem. So here's what I'm going to do. I got my beans in this uh, pan down here. And that will allow me to see they'll go to all the way down to the next one every time, see? That'll 
allow them to slide right on down where they need to be anyway. While I'm stringing them up and they won't get tangled that way. It's been a long time since I done this. I helped, helped my mother and she done it years ago when she was able. And it's been a while and I wish I had done, helped her and done it more when she was alive and able, but she can pretty much all her beans. And another thing, you have to be careful with these, especially if you hang them outside or something, because what will happen in the fall of the year, the bean beetles, I don't know what the insect is flying around laying eggs, but they lay eggs on drying beans. Uh, and what they do, they'll lay the egg in a little crevice on the bean, and then it will hatch, and the little, uh, worm will go inside the bean and live off of the bean until they get big enough to come out, and you'll not know that you got a bean weevil problem until it's too late when they start coming out of your beans. So... I don't much like hanging my beans outside for that reason. I don't want them to get infested or anything. And I have heard old stories about people cooking uh, leather britches and, you know, they'd have some protein in with them. But we don't want no protein. The only protein we want is what we add to these beans. So we're going to find us a good spot to hang them up to dry them where hopefully there won't be nothing get to them. And no, you know, no, <clears throat> no beetles or nothing like that. Weevils or nothing like that will uh, mess our beans up. So that's what we're going to do and hope for the best. You can see how good that's working. It allows the bean to go all the way down to the next one. And before you know it, you've got a string full ready to hang up. I don't think anything but a bean weevil would bother these because they're going to be drying down pretty fast. I've had some different thoughts about exactly where I might hang them at. So I've got to figure that out, but... You can see there, they're looking good. Looking real good. The main thing is just don't let them get tangled up. And I double that thread because if you don't, it can break your thread. They get pretty heavy when you get enough beans on there. So hopefully the double thread will be enough for the length of thread so that this beans ain't enough weight to break it, hopefully. But... These beans are different. They're different than just a, a pot of green beans after they're dried out and cooked. You know, you revive them and cook them. they got kind of a different flavor. It's a real, to me, it's a special flavor. I mean, whatever happens in the drying process, it adds a lot to them. It's kind of a, a smoky-like flavor, I guess you could say. That's kind of how I remember it as being kind of a, well, I don't know. It's a dry bean flavor. That's all I know to tell you. Like everything else, you ain't going to know what it tastes like till you taste of it. So, but the best I can tell you, it's kind of a smoky type flavor, I guess is about the only word I can think of to describe it. It's definitely different. That's looking real good here. But after these get good and dry, what we'll do is take them off of the string and put them in a sack and put them in the freezer and freeze them out real good. And that will keep them from, uh, if anything did get to them, that'll put a stop to it right quick. So that's what we're going to do for our method. In the olden days, if they had a good place, they'd just leave them hanging probably till they got ready to use them. But 
you have to kind of be careful with that because uh, if something's going to eat on them, well, you don't want it to. So you got to be careful with storing them. But then people had fireplaces and there's a lot of maybe smoke got out and a lot of heat and things like that. So that's what we're going to do right there. Looks good. I'm just going to lay them back over here on the table for the time being till I get my string fixed here. I'm going to take my needle off of my thread. Just have to break that off. I'm going to tie me a real good loop in the end of it here. Knot it real good. And get that ready to go. Ready to hang up there. I think instead of hooking the loop like I done with all that weight, I've got enough thread here. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. So we broke our thread, took the needle off, tied the two threads together just in a regular knot, and now I've got I've left enough thread I can come down here and make me a loop like that to pull my thread back through and end up with hopefully a good loop that's strong enough to hang hang these up here. Yeah, that seems like that's pretty strong. You can see what a string of beans we've got here. Now, we're going to get our needle threaded back up here. And it looked like the length I went, probably about 36 inches, about as long as a yardstick. That looked to be about the right length. Uh, maybe you can make it whatever length you want to, though between four and five feet long, but it's doubled. So you'd need a piece of thread about twice that long. Okay. That's about all the weight, weight of beans that I'd want to put on this type of thread I'm using. It might break and then you have to start all over, but I'm gonna loop this. I'm gonna loop this thread back around again like I done earlier. Like that and pull it through. Just make a simple loop there where I tied it off. Put my little stopper stick on there. Knot it right in the middle of it. Now we're ready for beans again. Lay that down in the bowl here. We can start lacing beans again. Run that first and all the way to the end so it don't get tangled up, just like it done. You'd probably be more careful than me and not have the problems I have, but it's on the first few there. Just pick you, pick you thread up and allow it the bean to go all the way down like it needs to and sometimes you'll have problems that arise because it's get, getting tangled up keep every bean in order there from the get-go and then you when you get done you'll be they'll be all straight when you get to your stopping point you don't have to go back checking them all the time, say. So. I'm real excited about doing this, and 
I'm real excited about sharing it with Yuns. Uh, like I say last time, I had anything to do with this. Me and Mama done it. She she talked about leather britchy beans and now these ain't leather leather trouser beans. They're leather britchy beans. So. Uh, like I said, the last time I had anything to do with them, me and mother done it. And, boy, I wish she was here today. It'd be fun to to do this again with her and uh, see her excitement for it. The reason I care about things like this was because of my mother and what she, <clears throat> what she showed me growing up. And, uh, you know, her excitement for them things and her happiness for them things really weighed a lot on me and what I cared about. And, you know, everybody's different, got different circumstances, but if you didn't have that, that's no reason why you can't do something like this and get excited about it and share it with people you love and care about, especially young people. We need to teach them all about this we can because, uh, well, I feel it's important and it is important and I want to share as much of it as I can. My girls, Virginia's gone to beach, Charlotte's gone to school right now, but we'll, uh, they'll see what we've done here and next time maybe it won't, I'll make a point to, uh, make sure we do this when they're around and share it with them, but they, they'll get to be a big, Part, they'll watch these beans after I've strung them up. They'll get to watch them dry, and then we'll take them off and uh, sack them up and put them in the freezer. So they will get some get some experience with this and uh, get to be part of it in some way. So one thing you want to watch here, I've been watching myself, is you probably can't see it on there, but where I'm working is real close to this needle right here at my face. Now, you get to watching them beans going down that string and ain't paying attention, you'll have that needle stuck in you somewhere, may hopefully not your eyeball. So be real careful and watch for that. I was just noticing it's right here at my face while I'm doing this, and I have to keep it up pretty high to keep these beans running down this thread like I want them to, so... Just be cautious of that. It'd be real easy to jab your eye out. There's a story about a boy. I think I seen it at the Museum of Appalachia. Maybe seen it on one of their postings or something. But he was uh, lacing up his boots. And he had a pocket. He had his little jackknife, his pocket knife in his hand. And when he pulled his boot strings tight... The boot string broke, and he stuck that knife right in one of his eyes and put his eye out. Just something that simple. He's lacing up in boots and tying them with a pocket knife in his hand instead of laying it down. And when that boot string broke, he's pulling it tight. When that boot string broke, that pocket knife flew up, and he stabbed himself right in the eye with it, put his eye out. So... You got to be careful when you're working with things like that and make sure nothing don't get away from you and, and go that route with it. You get hurt pretty quick. In this day and time, you really want to be extra cautious about getting hurt because I myself now, you may be feel differently, but I myself have less and less faith and... Uh, getting took care of in the way things are right now and i know a lot of good people that work in health care and nurses and everything else but right now i just that's all i'll say is that just be extra cautious and take care of yourself you don't want to get hurt and have to go somewhere uh, to get uh, looked after and you know depending on somebody to fix you or take care of you just I think right now is the time we need to be extra cautious about that and take real good care of our health and ourselves, and not take no chances of no kind. I, I could have very well poked my eye out with this needle here just a little while ago and 
Uh, you know, it's just easy to... It's easy to make a mistake and not be paying close enough attention to what you're doing. Especially when you get excited about something like I do, so. Them beans are stacking up. Look at that, what a string of them we got. And this is, uh, like I said, this is an old, old-timey method of drying beans. And I would like to know when it started. If it was brought here or if it was started here, I don't know any kind of history on it, but I'd like to. You know, that I can just imagine an old log house back in the mountains and you go in there and around the fireplace or somewhere there in the, in the main front room, having these beans hanging around or in the kitchen, have them hanging in there drying. Now, if you got a wood cook stove, or, or a wood heater you you got a real place to dry next to that thing and you can hang stuff around there and dry it i'm bad to make jer jerky in the winter time only with the heat off of my wood heater and i'll show you how i do that this winter but uh if we get our uh wood cook stove put back up i'll, I'll i would be hanging these around that cook stove somewhere because you're going to get a lot of heat and a lot of air circulation. It's a constant air circulation there. And you're not running a fan or anything else. So that would be working real good. And that's what we'll do when we get that cook stove put up. We've about got another strain full here. And it didn't take me long to do it. You see there. It ain't been just a few minutes I started it so but you just got to make sure you got a good place to hang these where they'll dry nice and be safe from any kind of varmints or bugs that's what you want to do. And I could see the same scenario you pick up on this bean string with this needle in your hand. And if that thread was to break, that needle is going to fly somewhere. If that thread breaks, it's going to go somewhere. You ain't going to be expecting that. So be very careful and get you some good heavy thread to do this. The thread I use, I don't think is not as heavy as I'd like, but my my other thread is not handy right now to get to, so we'll use what we got. I'd say that's about a string right there now. That's a pretty long string of beans. And we'll tie that knot off and hang it up. I'll show you this time a little bit better as to how I tie them off. I just take where the... Let me get zoomed in here. I just take where the needle is and the thread and just break it. And then I'll just maybe tie me a little knot up at the very end to keep them two threads together. Right plumb to the very end there. Just like that. And then I'll come down and I'll tie me a loop and my thread and if you get too many beans on there it makes it hard to do so bear that in mind because i can't use my needle here to help get that pull through there to tie my loop Let's see here we at uh, just like that all right Got us a nice loop tied right there. Now we got a nice loop right there at the end to hang up by. Let's start us another one here. When you don't cut that thread, when you just break it like I'm bad to do, it leaves you a nice little fuzzy end to try to get through the eye of that needle, and it's hard to do. I take my time and cut it. It'd work a whole lot easier for me, but I didn't. 
I got this handy dandy little needle threader that just sticks through there and it gives you a big opening to put your thread through after you get to where you can't see the best. I mean, I can still see pretty good, but I can tell it ain't as good as it was a few years ago, but it's still good and I'm thankful. So we'll pull that off, holding one end of the thread down here and just going up with our needle. Pull us off about as long or about as long as we want there and, and where it's doubled. Leave a little extra to tie the end this time because it wasn't too fine last time trying to trying to do that. Now I'm just going to tie them two ends together. I'll double that knot, just run it through twice. Make a good stopper knot on there. And now I'll open my thread up right there. Got my little twig hanging on there. Now we're ready to string some beans. Number one. Number two. Number three. I need me counting. You know how to count, don't you? And if you do get a big tangle mess you can't do nothing with, just tear your beans off of the thread and start all over. Yeah, don't sit there trying to untangle beans. Just They'll pop right through the thread. You can start right all over again and go on with your life. If that thread got kind of tangled on the end, I ain't even going to worry about it. Just pop them beans off and start her all over. Cause them beans will come right off of there that's something you need around the house though and around the homestead is a good place to dry a designated place a drying cabinet or a drying closet or these different ways of doing that you can check them out but if you got a far place a wood heater or a wood cook stove you got a good place already because that's going to cause some airflow and some heat and everything you need right there to dry whatever you need. People used to use the sunshine to do a lot of drying, but this day and time, you lay something out there like that, you probably wouldn't have nothing left time it got dried for the varmints and the bugs and everything else. I don't think that's so much a problem then. We've created a habitat for them things to thrive in. And that's why they're just about taking over everything but i would not hang my beans in direct sunshine because i it'll zap them my change of flavor i wouldn't do it this is going to be real fun to watch these beans dry every day see what's going on with them and I'll, of course i'll show you into the progress every day and how it's going absolutely will Absolutely will. Standing up with your string hanging straight down is the best way in my opinion because it, it lets you, you, your string can't get tangled up. It's going to be right there. So that's the best way in just Rose's opinion.
Beans go straight down. You never have a tangle. Been a pretty good while since we strung any up. And I, you know, you kind of, something you don't do all the time, you have to kind of uh, get reused to it again. Kind of get refreshed on it. That's what we had to do, get refreshed on stringing beans. And sometimes, you know, I've heard of people nowadays, they had, uh, they may not do a whole lot of bean stringing like this. And what they did have, what they did dry, they had to save it, you know, for a special time. Maybe on a holiday, Christmas or Thanksgiving, something like that. They'd save it for, you know, a special meal. And have some special beans with their meal. I hope we have enough for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, and maybe some to eat at just when we want them to. I believe we will. Some of these beans is already trying to start drying down a little bit, so. They really change color fast on the string where they're getting plenty of good air. They really change color fast. But this is fun. About about like stringing popcorn for Christmas. It's fun. When you string beans and break them and can them for a long time, this is a, a good change to what you're doing here. You know, it changes it, makes it a little more enjoyable. Of course, I enjoy it all, but you know what I mean, just something different, something something different's a little more fun to it seems like and this is something you don't just put in a jar and put in a can house and forget about it this is something you hang up like i said earlier this is <clears throat> appalachian fall decorating your house right here Appalachian fall decorating. You won't see this on a better homes and gardens, I guess. If you get you a big needle to start with, you're going to be glad you did. It's a whole lot easier to hold on to a big needle than it is a little one. Big needle is just a whole lot easier to work with. And I think too it will let your bean slide down the string better if you got a big needle instead of a little needle. So you can see here the needle I was using is about three inches long. And that's a good size needle for this job. There we go, there's a big old string.
right here at the end of our thread right here at the end of our thread the opposite of where the needle is we're just going to tie us a knot in there just like that i'm gonna make a stopper knot which means just tie it two or three times instead of just one time and pull it tight just like that stopper knot all right then i'm gonna take my two threads and spread them apart just like that make a loop on itself get my little birch twig here just like that put it in there slip it up tight on it just like that ready to go may be important i don't know it may be good to remember not to uh, run your thread through the bean. Make sure you miss the bean just through the hull. I don't know for a fact, but I do know about seeds and grains a little bit, and I feel like that would be the best idea to make sure you completely miss the bean and go between the beans, which is so much easier, and you can tell immediately if you stick the needle into the bean because it's going to be a... You're gonna have to press it through there. I feel like it would be best to absolutely miss the beans and go between them if at all possible. The scraps I had left from my beans, just, you know, the ones that was odd and I cleaned up and shelled some, I'm gonna cook them for supper tonight. And the way I do that, I just put them on a pot of water in the, on the stove and I boil them for about 10 or 15, 20 minutes, and then I drain the water off of them and put fresh water back on them. It kind of cooks the scum and whatnot off of the outside of them and, and kind of cleans them real good. And then when I put them back on, I'll do the same thing, but I'll put a piece of meat in there with them, a piece of midland meat, like fat back or streaked meat, uh and and season them with that and put some salt maybe a little black pepper in there and then cook them for till they get done and that'll be part of big part of supper tonight folks i hope you enjoyed this bean stringing video I'm going to keep you up and show you updates on how these things start drying. They've already faded out and really changed color since I hung them up here. And they ain't been hanging here long. But it's funny how things will dry out when you hang them up. And I mean, it makes perfect sense. They got plenty of airflow around them. But you can lay a bean down on the table and it'll rot. But you hang it up like this, and it'll dry out and preserve. That's a natural gift to us, a way of preserving food, and it don't cost us nothing. And it's some of the, in my opinion, the best flavored food to, that there is is dried food. It's just something different about it, just like cooking on a wood stove. Uh, it's just something different about it. And you can make fun of this old mountain boy stringing his beans up and hanging them up here in his living room, decorating like Appalachian style, if you want to. But this winter, I'll be the one laughing. I'll be the one eating a big pot of leather britchy beans. Mm -mm. Like this video if you will. Subscribe if you ain't already. Tell your friends about me. And tell somebody what leather britches is. Now remember, it ain't leather trousers, it's leather britches. This is Just Row at Matt Calf Mills. I look forward to seeing you next time.